Okay, so day 12, what I'm thankful for. So what I will talk about today is um, when I had a client come back that I really had a hard time troubleshooting. She had had a, a surgery, and this is somebody who I had trained for a while, and she had had a surgery on her knee, and she had been in and out of rehab, I think, for almost three years. And um, when she came back, I'd, I'd had back surgery, and I had you know, started learning some of the stuff I was doing, and she comes back and she goes, Cindy, I'm so sick of rehab. Um, can you just train me? I, I'm, I just, you know, she goes to rehab for meniscus tear, and now she has a hard time writing with a pen, her arm's numb, and she's actively in rehab, and she's just frustrated. So I was like, you know, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I'm not, I, I'll take a stab, but I, you know, I, I can't train you in pain. Um, but I remember how frustrating it was because um, I couldn't troubleshoot some of the things that she had before she had her meniscus um, torn. And so when she had the surgery and went through that three years, we were going very slowly. And I said, well, you know, there's this thing I learned. Um, I think you're this other body type, um, or I'm gonna call it a body type because I was called flexion intolerant um, when I went to one PT session before my surgery because the, guy, the physical therapist threw me into a cobra and I argued with him. I'm like, what are you doing? That hurts. And he goes, yeah, but are you numb down your leg? I said, no, but it, it hurts right here. And he goes, well, you're flexion intolerant. I'm like, what the hell is flexion intolerant? And he goes, just you're flexion intolerant. You can't crunch. So as I'm getting ready to compete for a show, um, in my head space is that I'm flexion intolerant. So I'm reading when I wasn't released to rehab and that's where I started. But then I'm reading about this whole extension intolerance section and all that. Um, cause it was in the book and might as well learn, you know, I was home for that two weeks, you know, which should have been six, but I was home for two weeks, um, on disability. And I remember when she came in, I'm like, you know, she kind of, kind of fits that other description. Like, you know, you know, the flatter, the flatter, butt. you know, I, I did everything. Oh my God. I, I tried to get this girl's butt to work. I did butt bridges. I did deadlifts. I did hip extends. Nothing was going to work on her. And then when she came back, I was like, you know, here, hold this, hold this dumbbell right here. And she's like, okay. And I said, do a deep squat. And this is one of the only things I had read in the book, holding a dumbbell and doing a deep squat, like all the way down. I said, do a bicep curl and come up. And when she did that, right, her eyes got so big and she goes, Cin Cindy, my, my butt, my butt turned on. I'm like, what? And she goes, my butt turned on. Then I did it and I didn't feel my butt as much, but then she did it and she's like, oh my God. The crazier part is literally within two weeks, all this hand stuff started going away and her glutes were engaging the more we did that exercise. So I'm grateful that she had the challenges that she did because it made me explore outside of my bounds and connect the dots of what I was reading and learning when I wasn't released to rehab. And the only reason I was reading that stuff was not because I don't believe in physical therapy is because I wanted to do it myself because I wanted to, I wanted to get better sooner. I didn't want to just sit for 90 days and be a, a bum on a couch. So I'm grateful for that. And to this day, she's still one of my great clients and she's one of my um, innovators, I guess you would say. And so, you know, if you stick with it, you might find things about yourself you never knew. All right, thanks.